All right, so what could possibly fit into a box this size? It couldn't be a full-size keyboard now, could it? Well, the answer to that question is, of course, yes, it absolutely could. If you saw my review a year ago on the Piano de Voyage, then you know that that 88 key keyboard came in a very similar size box as this. Well, today I've actually got a new model of the Piano de Voyage, which I am very excited to test out right here on screen with you all. All right. Let's get into it. Now, portability is the number one factor here when I'm giving this keyboard its final grade. Because of its incredible portability, it ends up getting a very, very high grade in my book. Now, a huge part of that is because many of the portable keyboards that I've used have to either have a flat surface so that they don't fall apart because they're put together with magnets or a system that is not strong enough to keep it together, or they're not nearly as portable. Either they weigh more or maybe they fold in the middle but they don't break down into four pieces so you can fit them in pretty much any bag. This keyboard breaks down into four pieces, fits right into a backpack, has velocity sensitive keys, and uses a sustain pedal and works with MIDI. So it basically takes care of all the important professional uses. We open up the bag, there are three of these in the box, and we get this, one of the modules of the new keyboard. Immediately, I'm noticing a couple things. It's got a slightly sleeker matte finish here, and we're gonna notice that the clasping system is actually gone and appears to be more of a screw-based system. So let's put it together and see how it all comes out. All right, so just like the original model, we've got these two metal pegs. We're gonna align these holes and place it on the peg, and then we go like this. We can just do it like that. Now, here's the new system we're gonna do a screw instead. So let's see how fast this moves. Okay, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty fast. Pretty easy to do. And then what I'm noticing is we can actually really tighten it kind of however much we want. I'm not gonna overdo it, but this is getting pretty tight. Yep, right off the bat, not only does that actually look sleeker without those little metal clasps, but I have to say, this already feels much, much more sturdy. There's absolutely no bend even possible in between the pieces. So this is a really welcome update. All right, let's get the third and final piece on now. Gonna do the same thing. Align the pegs. You actually get pretty fast with this. And then we're going to screw these together. Kind of doing both at once. Actually, yeah, wow, that was fast. <laughs> All right, so not bad. We're getting it nice and tight. And wow, yeah, you can already see, look at that. Even with totally incorrect weight distribution, it's pretty darn flat all the way across. So this is a really nice update to the clasping system. Right off the bat, noticing a couple other things. This is actually thinner, so this first piece is thinner. We've also got this joystick here, which I think is so much better because on the first model, we really only had the buttons, even for things like pitch bend and modulation. Now we've got a joystick that we can program. That's fantastic. And we've got the same thing here. We've got USB sustain pedal. And then on the front, just like the original, we've also got a uh, headphone jack. So you could potentially run a eighth inch into an amplifier if you wanted to go directly from this keyboard or you could actually um, you know do MIDI and then run the sound from either a computer or an iPad. That's what I personally do. Now I do want to note that the built-in sounds in this keyboard those are going to be very basic general MIDI sounds. So if you're someone who relies completely on your keyboard having fantastic built-in sounds this may not be the keyboard for you. However, this is how I think of it. I'm gonna be using this as MIDI, so I'm gonna be running through a laptop or an iPad, and I'm gonna be using Piano Tech or Keyscape, something that sounds absolutely fantastic. And then, in case of emergency, it's really nice to know that I could actually just come out of this keyboard and I'm gonna have my basic sounds that I need. That's really great to know. Let's fire it up and see how it plays. And I'll try to do some different techniques so you can hear how it sounds. So right now I'm going to try and play all the notes together, just to play voicings. Let's test the dynamics.
right, so in terms of playing it, it feels very much like the first model. Spring-loaded keys, not my favorite, I'm not gonna lie. It's not an incredible keyboard action. The velocity sensitivity works, it does what I need it to do, but it's not as seamless as playing a really nice weighted keyboard. But would I trade the portability of a three module backpack size keyboard for all of those things? Honestly, after this last year, yes, absolutely, in a heartbeat. I actually, on a couple occasions, showed up on a gig in New York City, right? Just took the subway, which actually saved me an expensive cab ride, which I used to have to, uh, you know, basically deduct from my earnings from every single gig. I would just load the Piano de Voyage into my backpack show up at the gig and I actually had a couple band leaders look at me in terror and say, Noah, you know you were supposed to have a keyboard today, right? And I was able to say, yeah, it's actually just in my backpack. And of course they were very surprised once I opened up my backpack and there was the Piano de Voyage. But yeah, this new model feels a lot like the old one. It feels great. So I can already tell that overall this is going to be a recommend. And I'm going to guess that were I to use this one for a year, this new clasping system would actually still be completely fine and good to go. This seems very tight, and it seems like even as time goes on, I'm going to be able to continue to tighten this so that the keyboard stays nice and sturdy. However, I will have to get back to you in a year of use and just see how that goes. Regardless, I would imagine that Rhyme Music, in creating this new version, took the clasping system feedback into account and just basically made this as a bit of an upgrade, of course. Now, before I get any deeper into the video, I wanna just let you know that I received both of these keyboards as review models, so I did not have to pay for them. That said, I always make it very, very clear to any company that sends me a review model, I'm gonna give my absolutely honest opinion on the product to you all. That is my top priority, and I'm never going to recommend a product to you if I don't believe in it myself. Also, very kind of Rhyme Music, they have given me a channel exclusive discount code that will also work with this new version. That code is NOAH K PIANO in all caps. So if you use that code, you'll actually get a really nice discount on the keyboard, and it also really helps directly support me as well because I get a small commission on that sale as well. Now, in case you haven't seen my original video about the Piano de Voyage, I wanna remind you that one thing that I actually do to make this sound as good as possible is I will actually turn down the velocity reactivity. That's something that you can actually do on their website. You plug the keyboard in, open up their website on Google Chrome, and you can actually change the setting of how the velocity responds to your uh, playing and your fingers, which is awesome to know that that's a possibility. What I do is when I'm using either Pianotech or Keyscape, I will actually just either turn down the velocity in one of those softwares, or I will do it in Logic or Ableton. There are plugins that allow you to adjust the velocity sensitivity as well. So what I'll do is I'll just make it so that the keyboard doesn't react to the full 127 MIDI velocity points. I'll bring it down to maybe like 100. So if I accidentally hit a note too hard, it's not gonna suddenly have my lines going to fortissimo in the middle of a line. And this is the result. All right, so let's get to the really juicy question here. Would I recommend this new model? Who would I recommend it for? And would I recommend the old model still having used this new one? Okay, so first of all, you really need to weigh how important is portability to you. If you don't care that much about portability and you just wanna get the best possible keyboard, you know what, this is not the instrument for you. It's just not. However, if you're like me and you want a keyboard that you can bring with you very easily for all sorts of different scenarios, whether it's traveling, gigging, even in your hometown, etc then this is very worth taking into consideration. Sometimes, even when I actually will have a piano at the gig, I'll bring this as like my auxiliary keyboard with some synths attached to it, or I might actually use it as a Rhodes sound on the side, something like that. So it's always a great option because it's, the portability is so easy. And so on many gigs, where I probably would have just decided to not have any sounds other than the acoustic piano at the gig, I just threw this in my backpack and voila, I actually had a second keyboard for those auxiliary sounds. So if that's a use case that would be interesting to you, another reason to consider this keyboard. I feel even better about recommending this new model 
because this new clasping system does seem to solve the one main issue that I had with the original after a year of use. It's a bit sleeker looking, it's super tight in terms of the locking mechanism, not to mention this joystick, which is actually, I think, a pretty nice little upgrade. So at the end of the day, for me, these instruments are incredible in terms of portability. If you're looking for an instrument that is both incredibly portable and also a well enough put together instrument to use on a professional level, as far as I know, this is the best thing on the market. So that's it. That's my one year review of the original Piano de Voyage. And this is a look at the new model. I hope that I answered all of your questions, but if not, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you if I have answers to any other questions you might have. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, click subscribe. If you got some great information out of this video or it helped you make some kind of a buying decision, please hit the like button. It really, really helps me out and I will see you next time.